In this video, I'm going to show you how controlling your aperture can create amazing background blur effects. Adorama TV presents Take and Make Great Photography with Gavin Hoey, where you'll learn how to take stunning photos and then polish them in post-production. Here's your host, Gavin Hoey. Hello, I'm Gavin Hoey and you're watching Adorama TV. Now in this video, I'm going to show you how to create amazing pictures using a technique known as background blur. Now, what is background blur? Well, you may have heard this technique called something different. You may have heard it called this word right here, the, the word beginning with B. I'm not going to say the word because it's pronounced in so many different ways and everybody insists their way is the right way. But you've heard it called this word and it's also called background blur, which is what I'll be calling it in this video. So what is it and why does it work so well? Well, over here I've got some Christmas lights to photograph. And if you look at these lights, they are small point sources of light. Okay, it's not like a, a big umbrella or a softbox, which would give you a flood of light. These are kind of tiny points of light. And that's the first thing you need to know about getting this effect to work, is they have to be little tiny spots of light. So I've got, what, 20 lights there. Actually, I haven't. I've got 19 because when I put them up, one of them just refused to go. It wouldn't be Christmas if one of the lights didn't work, I guess. I'm just going to take a picture of those lights. Just going to put my camera into aperture priority mode and take a shot. Here we go. And the end result is a picture that is, well, perfectly sharp, perfectly exposed, very, very dull. How's that going to be an interesting picture? Well, this technique is called background blur, so the clue is in the name. I'm actually going to come off autofocus and I'm going to switch to manual focus. I'm then going to make my camera focus as close as it can. In this case, that's about 45 centimetres. Now, obviously, I'm quite a bit further away than 45 centimetres. Those are a metre and a half away, I guess. So when I take the picture now, they all appear to be out of focus. But they're not out of focus. The background's out of focus. But those points of light have actually come out as circles. And that's the effect we're going for. Those little circles of light that are actually pretty sharp. That's the background blur in action. Now, on your lens, when you do this, you might find yours come out as circles. They might come out as hexagons. It depends on the lens that you're using. How can we get this better? Well, I can get it better in a couple of different ways. First of all, I can make sure I'm working with the right aperture. So if I use, let's say, f11 for this shot, it's still out of focus. But when I take the picture, it is actually not giving me the same effect. They're looking too sharp. So if I now swap to f4, that's the biggest aperture or the smallest aperture number that I can dial in, and I take the same shot, look at the difference between those two pictures. At f4, those points of light take on that nice circular look. So the knack here is always use the biggest aperture, the smallest number that you can dial in to get that effect. Now on this lens, that's a f4 aperture because that is the, the smallest number I can dial in. You might be able to get an f2.8 or an f1.8 or even an f1.4. Whatever your smallest number, that's what you're going to use for your f number. Next thing is the zoom. The more you zoom in, then the, the better this effect looks. So I'm going to be using a 100 millimeter lens and I'm going to be back here somewhere because I have to step backwards now, obviously. And back here, that gives a great effect. So compared to when I was a little bit closer, the difference is rather remarkable. The, the spots of light, which remember are just tiny pinpricks of light, now have these beautiful circles of light and that's the background blur in action. Okay, so we figured this out. We're going to be using the, the smallest aperture number. We're going to be zooming in as much as we can, and we're going to be focusing as close to the, the closest focus point that the lens can do. All we've got to do now is set a subject up and take the shot. Okay, so I'm pretty much set up now. I've got my camera on a nice sturdy tripod because it's not very bright in here and to see these little lights we have to have the, uh, the video lights down quite low, which means that the exposure is going to be probably about a thirtieth of a second ISO 400, somewhere in that kind of area. So a tripod really essential for this technique. 
Uh, I've also got my little uh, box here. This is my, my Christmas box, all, all looking very festive, we're very good. And then I've got the, uh, the lights just behind it, and they are, they're not far behind it either, so we're, we're probably, I don't know, what about a meter maybe back? So let's start here, and we'll see how this looks. I'll just turn the camera on the side, and we'll frame up the shot like so. Now, because I'm in uh, manual focus, I'm actually going to switch to live view to do the, the focusing, because I find that a little bit easier. And we'll manually focus that up, and then we'll take the shot. Okay, so you can see how this is looking. This looks pretty good. We've got the, uh, the little background blur, the lights just floating out of the Christmas box, and it all looks very, very festive and pretty good. How will it change, though, if I move the distance between the box and the lights backwards? Let's find out. OK, so I've moved this back so it's roughly twice the distance. It might be even a little bit more than twice the distance away. That means that the distance from the, the background blur to the camera should be about as good as I can get it in my studio here. Let's just set the camera up again. Now, if you want to find out more about background blur, don't forget to check out the Adorama Learning site where you can find out how this all works with some excellent technical advice. Once again, I'm going to be using uh, Live View to get this all in focus. So we'll come in and check the focusing, and we'll take the shot. OK, now that looks pretty good, but when I look at those circles in the background, they seem to be above the box, and what I want is the impression that the circles are actually coming out of the box. So let's just change this a little bit. Let's just drop the camera angle down slightly, and we'll recompose the shot. Again, still using live view, just like that. That'll do. And we'll take the next shot. And there you go. That looks absolutely brilliant. Now, it's worth remembering you want to be as close as you can to your subject. So you're keeping your focus distance to its absolute closest. That's going to make that background blur circles as big as they possibly can be. And that works pretty well. In fact, the only thing I want to do now is to uh, get my memory card. Let's go into Photoshop and we'll get these pictures processed in Adobe Camera Raw. And I'm going to do that right now. So it's quite possible I'm going to need to do almost no adjustments to this picture at all because we got basically the whole picture right inside of camera. We framed it up and I've got all these lovely circles of light just where I want them. So there's not really going to be much Photoshop work to do here. There is just a few tweaks to do and they are mostly caused by the lighting. The whole scene here was lit for the purposes of video so it's a little bit bright on the left hand side. However, what am I going to do? Well, first of all, let's just change the color. I'm going to pop the white balance onto daylight, just so it has a slight warmth. And I think that adds to that whole festive feeling. Then I'm going to come down to the highlights, and I'll pull the highlights back slightly, so we retain a bit more detail in the little circles, and a bit more on the box, but a little bit more work needs to be done there in a moment. And then, of course, I'm going to put a bit of clarity in, because I love a bit of clarity, and a bit of vibrance just to boost the colors too. Now, this was shot at ISO 400 on a Canon 5D Mark II. That means there's going to be a little bit of noise, but not a great deal of noise in the picture. Double-clicking the zoom tool means I go and have a look at actual pixels. So I'm just going to jump to the Detail tab, the two little pyramids here, and I'll take the noise reduction up ever so slightly. It doesn't need much, just to smooth out a little bit of that noise. Double-click on the Hand tool, return it back to an on-screen image. So that's the, the global adjustments done. I'm now going to make some local adjustments by switching to the adjustment brush. So I think I'm going to bring my exposure down, maybe a stop and a half, and I'm just going to paint in that corner of the picture because it seems a, a little bit bright up there. Okay, a stop and a half was a bit too much, but that's not a problem. Nice thing about the adjustment brush is you paint in with the brush and then you fine tune the effect with the slider. So you don't have to get it right first time. You can kind of pick and choose how you want to do it. It still looks a little bit bright on the lid of the box. So I'll just take the highlights down to minus 50. And I'll just paint in those highlights just to recover those rather nicely. 
and it looks slightly shadowy down here in the front end of the box there so let's just put a stop of light in there plus one one click yeah that's all it needed just one click right that's all the adjustments i want to do here i'm just going to click on open image and we'll scoot into the photoshop cs6 bit of things and see if we need to do anything there so i'm going to zoom in nice and close so i can really see what's going on looks pretty good it looks okay there's a little bit of fine tuning to be done you may notice the front end of the box here is a little bit soft now we were shooting wide open f4 and that means you get a very shallow depth of field and that of course creates the effect with the circles in the background now if you want a bigger depth of field check out one of my previous videos where i talk about focus stacking and that could well be the solution that you're looking for but i don't mind that in this picture i think that's fine the only thing I'm looking for really are the circles here. There's a few little spots and dots. So I'm just going to remove any sort of weird spottiness inside the circles using the spot healing brush. And just a few to remove, not too many. There they are. And pretty much done. There's one there, one there, one on the edge there, one on the edge there. Finished. Okay, double click on the hand tool. And there you go. There's my final picture completed. I'm Gavin Hoey. Thanks for watching. Adorama TV is brought to you by Adorama, your best source for the equipment and knowledge you need. For all the latest photography, video, and computer gear, visit Adorama.com. Place your order by 7 p.m. and it ships the same day. Plus, the next time you're in New York City, be sure to visit our store located on 18th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue. Check out the Adorama Rental Company for professional cameras, lighting, computers, and more. We'll help you make the best selection to match your needs while giving you the knowledge to achieve the best outcome from your rental. Adorama is your complete solution for equipment, printing, training, and more. Adorama, more than a camera store.